April 6, 2021. It's early on a Tuesday evening in Southern California, and a wild police chase is underway. It was one of the most dangerous SoCal pursuits in recent memory. So this chase starts in San Diego County, which is over 100 miles from where it ended. The long chase begins when police try to corner a murder suspect. What prompted this pursuit was that you had sheriff deputies looking for this murder suspect. And then when they catch up with him, he fights with them and gets away. And they start to chase him through Los Angeles for over two hours. He drove around for hours across four counties. As news cameras trail his every move, the runaway murder suspect hits speeds up to 90 miles an hour. I was just wrapping up my day when I get an alert that there's a pursuit happening in Southern California, and I immediately turn on the news. This individual is weaving in and out of traffic. He's going at extremely high speeds, almost as if he's taunting the police to follow him. It's very unpredictable. It's very wild. It is not scripted, like watching a reality show unfold in front of you. A large truck often driving against oncoming traffic, narrowly missing vehicles as he drove at incredibly high speeds. The newscasters were describing him as somebody who's armed and dangerous and somebody who had already potentially assaulted a police officer at the beginning of this chase. Is he under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Is he trying to have his 15 minutes of fame? Nobody is sure what frame of mind the driver is in, but he seems to be trying to get rid of something. The driver routinely threw material out the window. Local semi-truck driver Ahmed Shaban is looking forward to the end of his shift when he first hears the sirens. He's at the intersection of Holt and San Antonio in Pomona. And the unfolding drama passes right by him. I was speaking on the phone to one of my friends. Hey, um, there's a guy being chased by like 50 cops. He's like, yeah, he's on TV. They've been chasing him for a couple of hours and he killed somebody. He was doing 50, 60. That's insane. There's people crossing the streets. There's intersections. He's not stopping at red lights. Ahmed fears that people are going to get hurt or killed. So he decides to make a very risky and bold move. I was telling my friend, he's right next to me. He's like, just stay away from the, from the street. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get this guy, I'm gonna stop him. Ahmed pulls his rig up to the intersection, hoping for the opportunity to cut the runaway driver off. Yeah, so he's gonna go right against that truck. And the fact that this driver was putting himself and or his rig at risk is pretty brave. He already knows that the police are chasing a murder suspect, and he's trying to do the right thing. He saw me starting to block the intersection, so he gunned his truck, trying to go around. So I gunned mine to, to stop him. That's when things come to a dramatic halt. The runaway pickup truck smashes right into Ahmed's rig, and it's all caught on his dashboard camera. I was lucky because he just got out of the gas station and turned, and he already got up to 34 miles per hour. So in that little distance, he gained that much speed. Ahmed is stunned and has a knee injury, but calmly climbs out of his rig. As soon as I opened my door, cops started coming over yelling, come here, come here, come here, run, run, run. Dozens of police cars swarm in and order the wild driver to surrender. Immediately, they're giving orders for the suspect to get out. The suspect is on the ground, and he's got guns pointed at him. Police have to approach this vehicle very, very carefully, because they don't know if this suspect is armed and he wants to go out in a blaze of glory or not. Yeah, so he's going to go right against that truck, and he hits the truck. That might be it. I didn't expect him to hit me. My plan was is to block the whole intersection, get him you know, uh, boxed in, that's it. When Ahmed first sets eyes on the driver who has just run into his truck, he's furious. I was gonna get out and I was gonna go get him out of his truck. But with police lasers trained on him, the man is handcuffed within seconds. I think within the frame of 30 seconds, there was 360 degrees cameras. 
The suspect gets on the ground and pretty quickly is drug off and taken into custody. The U.S. Marshals confirm it is Michael Caleb Reed, the suspect they've been looking for. The murder suspect police have been chasing for hours is no longer on the run. But this drama isn't over yet. To everyone's shock, a female sticks her head out of the truck's window. We had no indication that there was a passenger. They don't know who this woman is, but they want to take her out very carefully because they don't know if she is perhaps an accomplice. This person might also be somebody who's armed and dangerous, somebody who is in the car with a murder suspect. What is their relation? You just don't know. She might be a victim in all of this. This makes a very precarious situation for the police to be in. They have to take this one step at a time. Police yell at the woman to put her hands in the air. Then they ask her to slowly back away from the truck. So they're being very careful as they remove her from the vehicle, backing her up away from the vehicle as they have her gunpoint. The unidentified female passenger is questioned, then released. She tells reporters she's a friend of the driver and claims he picked her up earlier in the day for a drive to Los Angeles. I guess she got nothing to do with what happened. They handcuffed her, and then a couple minutes later, they released her. It turns out the driver, 36-year-old Michael Reed, isn't just wanted for murder. He already has a long rap sheet. He has a rape, he has car stealing, a lot of things. So he had to be stopped. Reed is charged with carjacking and reckless evading of a police officer. And the video of the wild chase to capture him quickly goes viral. As chases go, this really was something to see. High speeds, risky moves. When he saw that suspect vehicle passing right by here tonight, it was just kind of wired in him. It was his instinct. He realized he had to make a move and take that driver out. People in the street just driving say, thank you, thank you. Thank you for stopping the chase. People are honking for me. It was, uh, it was uh, one hell of a moment. Ahmed becomes an instant international celebrity. His home country of Egypt is so proud of him, they bring him back for an honorary visit. The way they see it, Egyptian here, he showed the world how great the Egyptian people are, how strong the Egyptian people are. They're just super happy about it. His sister keeps track of all the media coverage on her Facebook page. And people are so moved by Ahmed's bravery that within two months, they donate over $92,000 to a fund dedicated to getting him and his rig back to work. You know, I'm very thankful for all the people that did this. It's like a, it's like a dream. Everything just happens so fast, so quick, and then all of a sudden, I'm all over the place. For Ahmed, one of the most rewarding moments comes when the family of the man the runaway driver is accused of murdering reaches out to thank him. His family, his wife, and his kids reached out to me and many, many thank you, and they've been trying to, to get him for a while. And though Ahmed is proud of his quick thinking that day, he modestly credits his bravery to his experience in the armed forces. It's my military training. I served in the Egyptian military, and we have this thing, it's called protecting human life at all costs. So you don't think of the cost, you just uh, um, react. We'll do this again, absolutely. Without a doubt, I always help people.